This is three questions with Grace McKinney and Zach Rondo. Let's stick through the music. Hey, what's up, guys? These guys are actually from Michigan, and they're at a conference today, and they totally skipped someone's session. So if you're their principal, <laughs> just so you know, they're supposed to be working. No, I'm just kidding. It's summertime that we're recording this, so I'm sure you're kind of there on uh, you're doing presenting. But, hey, Grace and Zach, it was great to kind of talk to you before the podcast. And uh, I'm excited about your book, The Expert Effect. And uh, you can actually see in the link below, um, there's a link to it on uh, – it's going to be on Amazon, right? It's, yep. Okay, yep. so it's already there. You'll see the link below. Uh, we're going to record another podcast, and we're going to dive into uh, deep into that one. Uh, but just thanks for taking the time to be on the show. Thanks for you know joining me today. And you, you know the format. And the, and the first question we talked about this before, um, Grayson. I'm going to ask you when you think about a teacher. You know, and both of you teach currently. I know. Uh, I think Grayson, you teach. Grayson, you teach fifth grade, right? fifth yeah, grade currently right. and Zach you're in fourth grade so you know I, I know that you're inspiring a lot of people uh, your book is going to have like a huge impact on education but when you look back at your own educational career maybe as a student maybe as a teacher who's a teacher that inspired you and why oh my gosh so I actually had the chance as a professional teacher to run into this person that I'm thinking of uh, I'm from the west side of Michigan originally in Grand Rapids east Grand Rapids and attended Lakeside Elementary School. And uh, I feel like it's come completely full circle. I'm teaching fifth grade now, and a teacher that had the biggest impact on me was my fifth grade teacher, Mr. Brown. Uh, Mr. Brown was the coolest teacher. Uh, everybody wanted to have him for fifth grade, you know, from the time you entered kindergarten. And uh, one of the biggest things that has uh, like stuck with me even until today was his passion for uh, math and his enthusiasm for chess. He had this classroom with uh, ch like chess trophies, huge golden, you know, the plastic, you know, shiny holographic mm -hmm. trophies all around the room of all of these uh, chess teams that he had taken to tournaments. And like we got to play chess in class. He taught me the game. Uh, he, he even gave me a board to take home and play at home so that I could like improve. Like you could just tell he cared so much about kids. Mm -hmm. Um, he was so kind and like, it was just, his classroom was a place you wanted to be. And so I have made it a, a mission of mine to keep chess boards in my classroom. We started a chess club at our school a couple of years ago, and, uh, I feel like I'm carrying on his work. I love that. Hey, okay. So I, I got this idea. Okay. This is the idea coming from this conversation. You guys should start a podcast and, <laughs> but like now that we're opening up and you know, you should start a podcast. Yeah. And you should call it like chess and education and play chess and you talk oh. the entire time until somebody wins. <laughs> right? Like, could yeah. you do that or like, yeah. would that throw you off? We could be, no, we could like invite different teachers on. I would love that. Against them and have like a camera on the board and like watch the movie. That would be, that's a good idea. Chess it is actually a good idea. After the, after the Queen's Gambit yes. came out. Chess okay. Yes. Like right. Exploding. So, so <laughs> when, when you guys start this. I am the first guest. Okay. So I like, Perfect. I called this, right. But I, I think, I think that would be actually kind of a cool thing. Right. And, uh, you can, it, yeah. it'd be like the, you know, have you ever seen the hot ones podcast where they eat chicken wings? And yes. like, oh my God. That's like, the, it's kind of, this is like a, you know, that's the education. For, <laughs> whoever takes this idea, like you guys better be on this because as soon as someone hears it, I'm totally doing this. Right. So you would get credit for it. Okay. Mr. You know, we would be, we would have so much street cred with students too, who all want to be YouTubers and like Twitch gaming streamers. Like we could be like the chess, the old school streaming Maybe. game stream. I wonder people. if you could probably do that with a virtual board, right? Like you can have like three yeah. screen this is, ideas coming out, but Hey, shout out. And you, when did you see Mr. Brown? When, how long was that? Uh, oh my gosh. Oh, let's see. Uh, I, let's see. Uh, that's a math question. That's not fair. Probably 1994. <laughs> oh, okay. And, and is like, he's still around. Do you know if he's still teaching or? He, he's retired, um, but I ran into him at um, a friend's like college graduation party. That's like the kind of impact that he made. Wow. Like this, this my my best friend from uh, all throughout school graduated from the University of Michigan. Now he's a doctor, but he invited his this fifth grade teacher to his uh, college graduation party. So okay, so actually, to be honest with you, like it's kind of Mr. Brown, like he started this idea. So I'm like I'm like one <laughs> I'm one B on the idea. So Mr. Brown, shout out if you're listening. <laughs> Got the shout out button. Yeah. All right. Okay, Zach. All right. So I know we talked about this before. 
Um, but when you think about administrators, and I know you and Grayson have the same administrator right now, correct? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So who's an administrator that inspired you and why? I'm going to shout out our current principal, Dr. Tammy DePonio, um, for the first reason being she hired Grayson and I both into our uh, current awesome. positions. Um, so that definitely gets a shout out. But she is. Right. Um, you said it. Got to hit it early. I'm hoping for an air horn moment. There, there you yeah, go. That's yeah. Awesome. yeah. Um, she, I've been a teacher for eight years now, and she's been my principal um, for seven of those eight years. And she's just been a constant source of um, support to us. And Grayson and I have tended over the years to come up with some um, kind of off the wall ideas mm -hmm. and some bigger picture ideas. And it, yes. she's always been there to say yes and like build right. on our thinking, never put our thinking down. Um, so that's, I know, had a huge impact on both of our uh, careers. And uh, we wrote about her in the acknowledgments of our book as Love well. That. Love that. And that's why I made the joke that if you're admins listening, because I already knew who you're going to say. <laughs> so like you probably at the beginning of the podcast were in trouble and now you're totally out of it right like you you, you got out of that space yeah but I, I i love that and uh joe sanfilippo he's a superintendent of wisconsin i'm sure he he's been in mccall like uh mm -hmm. he goes there all the time right so i think he's that yep. like basically only michigan is it's the only place that wants to hear from him <laughs> But uh, he, he always says that basically when staff comes to him, he wants them to walk away um, more excited about their idea than when they walked in to share it in the first place. And I, so I love that. And what, sorry, what is your principal's name again? Tammy DeBonio. All right. Shout out. <laughs> okay. Last one. All right. So, and you guys can answer this together. You can answer it separate, however you like, but you know, we're, we've talked a lot about, you know, some of the inspiration that you have. And I'm sure over the years with some of the ideas you have, you inspired a lot of students. Uh, but I guarantee, and you talk about, you know, the idea of the expert effect. Nobody walks into education in their first year an expert. You could be a pretty good teacher, right? But I, I always say this. If you don't look back on your career with some shame of how much you sucked at some <laughs> point, you're probably not that good right now, right? Like. And it's not that you were bad at that point, but we just, we should be getting better, right? That's part of the process of yeah. learning. So if you were to both look back at your careers and talk to yourself, you know, as first year teachers, what advice would you give to yourself? There's a moment that sticks out for me. Um, you know, my first year of teaching, I was teaching a fifth and sixth grade multi-age class. And uh, I love the kids, but my idea of success as a teacher was, um, you know, a quiet, controlled, calm class. Um, and I remember that one of my students, his name was Justin, and he told me, Mr. McKinney, like I was like getting on them one day about, you know, too much talking. He said, Mr. McKinney, we're not robots. And so, um, you know, a quiet classroom does not necessarily mean uh, an exciting, successful mm -hmm. learning classroom. And so that would be, you know, I didn't have to tell myself that as a teacher because my students did. And I'm <laughs> grateful for that. That's all. I'll always remember. That's where, you get, that's where you get your best feedback, right? So I love that. Yes. Zach? What about you? Yeah, I would definitely build off of that and just say that school doesn't have to look the way it looked when you were a kid in mm -hmm. school. And I think oftentimes mm -hmm. when we start this profession, the only experiences we have are what we remember school being like and trying to recreate right. that. But another one, a huge one, I would say, um, is that I, not to be afraid of technology, which is funny because I now like a grace and i are the tech chairs of our building right. we're known for using a lot of technology but my first year teaching we had a school set of ipads to check out and i checked them out zero times in that entire mm. first year um kind of out of that fear of well the kids know more about ipads than i do college didn't train me how to use ipads with teaching mm. um and then the next year we went one to one so it was like there was no, no choice, choice anymore <laughs> but to dive in figure it out um spent that summer playing with an ipad but i i was that teacher who was afraid of technology right. that first year and giving up control i think is the, the where that fear stemmed from yeah and just just like when you're when you're talking about that i think a lot of people go from a place of fear like i think a lot of times our decisions are made uh you know with technology based on a lack of information as opposed to an abundance right like i you, i can talk about negative things with technology from a place of experience and I actually think it's important to understand those things and help navigate, you know, teach students how to navigate um, that process. And there's one thing that you said, Zach, that um, I thought about not only as an educator, but as an administrator. Uh, I talked to some teachers who just have re really great leadership qualities. 
And I, I don't believe that every teacher that has leadership qualities needs to go into administration to, to do this, right? But I think a lot of times there's certain skill sets that, you know, lend nicely to being an administrator. And often I hear a uh, teacher say to me, I'm like, you know, you should think about being a principal. Oh, I, I don't want to do that stuff. I don't want to do that stuff. I'm like, what's that stuff? Why well, I like being around kids. I'm like, I was around kids every day, right? I was in classrooms all the time. I did this. And it's the same thing that you just said it's often our perception of what our principal does is what we have to do if we go in that role. Whereas I would say, no, you're the print, you're literally the boss. You can do whatever you want, right? That's the beauty of your job, right? You know, you're not the superintendent, but you know, they probably superintendent probably doesn't show up that often anyway. So yeah, of course there's certain things that you have to check off. There's certain things that you actually have to do, but I like, uh, to be, you know, I always ask, would you want to be learning in your classroom? But I, the same question applies to administrators, you know, and talking about your own principal, it's probably, you know, she can answer that very well. Like, would I want to be a teacher of my own staff? Right? Like, don't be the principal you had, be the principal you wanted. And I think that's a really important aspect. So uh, I loved having you guys. I'm really excited to uh, talk more about your book, uh, The Expert Effect. And so you can check that out uh, in the link. But thanks for thanks for being here. Thanks for taking the time to be on the podcast. Thanks for skipping a session because no teacher has ever done that. <laughs> in the history of education, right? So thanks so much for being here. And everyone, thanks, for, thanks so much for listening. Thank you. Take care, everybody.